chefs, you're the chef at uh, Olivetto in Oakland. There's Olivetto restaurant upstairs and Olivetto cafe downstairs. We're gonna talk about the restaurant, um, which has a reputation that you make everything from scratch. That we do. You do. Well, I, where, 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 where it happens, like when you hit your meat? This is our meat locker, which is pretty unique for a restaurant of our size. You'll have steakhouses that have meat lockers like this, but for a restaurant that you know we're 100 seats, it's not that common to have access to a storage facility like this. So we uh, we get in all of our animals whole. We get about two steers a month from Mac McGruder. Right now we have four uh, four lambs hanging. Actually, this is. Uh, this is what your lamb chop is all Yeah, so I just said you came to my table wanting to see your lamb chop. I just chopped them up right now from, from this piece, right? That's correct. Yeah. When you came in, I was playing your menu. I remember we had these beautiful lambs down here. And I came down and took uh, took two portions of the chops off and cleaned them up and cooked them for you. So meat, but also the charcuterie. You, the, the thing about the charcuterie is here, but it's the one that you make yourself. That's right. Including the, including the prosciutto here. This is a this is a rather large prosciutto that just came out of salt about two days ago. We salt them, um, depending on the size, for about 31 days. After that, we'll soak them in water to get some of that salinity off. And then we'll hang them to dry them for about another week. At that point, we'll cap them in fat and bring them up to our actual aging room. Same thing with the uh, salumi. After we've got this nice mold casing on, we'll let the mold casing harden, and then we'll bring them up to our... How many different salumi you have you made? Um, probably 15 different ones. Right now we've got three or four hanging. This is Chris Bone. This is a... Uh, this is Bastardo. You had this this afternoon. This was the beef one. We have a duck salami right here. Uh, more duck. Felino. And I guess that's it as far as ones in here. We also have some whole cut charcuterie over here. A um, couple more prosciutto. This is going to be Lonza. These are Lonza up here as well. This one has a little more age on it. And where, where, where is that pork belly that you served us, the double stack pork belly you have no more here? That's upstairs. Upstairs. Nor so, uh, John, the passion of food started when, like, I think you told me that you were you're living with your father, your father doesn't cook, you got tired of eating uh, um, cream cheese on the uh, bagels. On bagels. So you started cooking yourself, for yourself to make sure you eat good foods, right? right? Yeah, it was that I wanted to eat, but I also was always interested in cooking. I always liked the creative aspect of it, being able to take something so just kind of concrete and creating something completely different and you know beautiful out of it. So I, my food's definitely evolved a little bit from when I was uh, just trying to make something better than cream cheese sandwiches, but I, that's definitely where it all started. <laughs> well, it was a little better than cream cheese sandwiches. Yeah. That. So you, 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 you're from the uh, Midwest, and then you, you came over to San Francisco because you like the dining scene and such a different restaurant, including La Folie, which you, sounds like you, you went to uh, Curly School, and after that, La Folie, and then it sounds like you got a lot of. Um, out of uh, Ronald Paso, it showed you a lot of things, right? Yeah, I definitely learned a lot from him. Uh, that was that was a good restaurant to be in as a young cook, just because you did everything for your station every day, which was the same thing with a lot of the restaurants I went to. But it was it was an intense restaurant, being that we get there at 10, 11 in the morning and stay until midnight, one o'clock. But you got to see pretty much every aspect of the restaurant and make every uh, every dish yourself. So there's a lot of restaurants these days where the cooks don't have that luxury. They come in and a lot of their stuff is already prepped and it's it's hard to Well, really, I guess that's, uh, that's where you learn, so I guess you really like that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's an extensive uh, pasta menu at the restaurant, we're going to go upstairs uh, to the pasta room and then see how it works. Yeah, I think we're going to make a little yeah. onyologi. So, of course, as the rest, everything's homemade. The dough's homemade. You have different doughs for different pastas. 
And right now we're gonna play with the dough that to make those onion lotis, right? Yeah, this is just a basic white dough. Pretty heavy in egg yolk. It's about 30 egg yolks to a kilo. And we leave it pretty sticky. That way we don't have to spray with much water to get it to stick together. This is just the basic dough we use for a filled pasta. For some of our other uh, laminated doughs, we're playing around with whole grains. We have the spaghetti neri, which you had earlier, which was colored with a squid ink. It's got a little hint of that squid flavor to it. Nice pasta for seafood. So I heard the word green. Tell me what's the special thing you have in the restaurant with the green. You have a special relationship with the... We do. Community Grains is Bob Klein's, Bob Klein's uh, company. It is true, Bob's the owner. Bob's the owner. So it's true California whole grain. A lot of people throw around the word whole wheat, whole grain, and it's not truly whole grain. It just has a little bran in it for color. This is the bran, the uh, pus, everything is in there, and it's, it's a completely different thing. It, it's a lot more flavorful, healthy. It's, it's chow. True whole grain is challenging to make pasta with, but we've, uh, we've been working on it and it's, it's pretty good. So that, that's what you use. And then, say, even the polenta is, you grow your own polenta, right? Exactly. That's actually a, uh, it's an Italian varietal that Bob brought back some years ago from Italy. And that's, that's also California grown whole grain. It's whole uh, polenta. And you saw it has kind of a brown, brown color to it. It's got a nutty flavor, uh, definitely different. Yeah, it's very good. Different than most polentas. So, so let's play a little with your sure. pasta machine. This will start by just rolling it out. And that's the filling for those uh, agnoti, right? Yeah, that's a basic pork filling. We we'll use pork shoulder as well as we spit roast a lot of meat here and we'll always, we'll have a little bit left over at the end of the night. So a lot of the time we will make the filling out of the leftover pork, which it gives it a nice smokiness and we end up having uh, having a good filling made from it. So how many different pasta do you have on the menu? I have quite a few for lunch. Right now we have about 11. 11? Yeah. And then you change, of course, uh, over the course of the year because your pasta is Feel those things, or you add, you know, on the side. So depending on the season and then what's available on the market, you change the the flavor, right? Yeah, we change. It's partially based on that, but I've got excuse me, I've got kind of a short attention span. So I like to change the menu, not on a daily basis, but we definitely change some items every day. So it's, very short attention span, but I guess it's good for the. Customers, they come back and they get something different every day, right? Yeah, we have a lot of regulars that like the restaurant because of that, because they can get a different uh, different food every day. They don't get bored. So there's there's some items that are always on there. Our red winter wheat penne olive oil they say is always on the menu, and that that's one of those whole grain uh, doughs. I'll show you a little bit flour. It's pretty interesting. So this is the uh, red winter wheat. Oh, okay. Yeah, when, it's different. It's a different. When you add yeah. water to it, it gets really kind of a deep, uh, deep color to it. So you only use this for pasta, right? That no, we use it for several different things. I mean, this is a uh, a basic tart dough made out of it, and it has that really deep brown color mm -hmm. from it. So it's it's pretty uh, pretty universal. I mean. It's, it's not like most whole grains where it'll have a really dry and crumbly texture to it. Because it has that bran in there and the germ, it has, has excess or extra fat in it, so we can actually use it for things that you would use normal flour for. How do you know I was going to make pasta with you this afternoon? I didn't know that either. Maybe, maybe you're probably more skilled than me of doing this, so I might let you do it, but... So you serve them, you do them in the afternoon for the evening, right? Correct. And how long does it take to cook very shortly? Those are about a four minute cook. Three or four minutes. It really depends on the flour and the, uh, the shape. Because some of our, some of our pastas like the Darganelli, it has kind of a thick seam on it. 
so it tends to take a little bit longer. This one, it's probably a, uh, probably a three minute cook. But where do you learn how to make pasta? I, a lot of it was myself. I experimented with it when I, I went to, uh, I went to work for Mike Tusk at Quince with the intention of learning pasta and learning how to uh, learning how to make pasta, learning how to butcher animals. And because it was such a busy restaurant, I was a line cook there. I just really never uh, never got a chance to do any of that stuff. So after I left, I went to Zinnia. And I was a sous chef there, so I had a lot of control over the menu and started putting pastas on the menu. And I played around with pastas there and really kind of taught myself how to do them. And then when I got here, there was a lot more equipment to use and I just had a lot more opportunity to do it. So. Well, thank you. Absolutely. Okay, so now from your meat room, pasta room, now we're in the front of the grill. Correct. So what are you grilling here? So a large part of the menu is grilled meats and fish. We have a spit roast here, as well as a uh, wood fired grill. Tonight we're doing a uh, leg of lamb. So this is boned out and then it's rubbed with a little garlic, anchovy. There's some. Uh, oregano in there as well as lemon zest. And then real wood. Real wood. Is there a particular wood that you like to we work use with? We use almond wood. Almond wood. Almond wood is hard enough that we don't burn through it too quick, but it has a nice flavor to it. Fairly mild uh, while still giving it a nice flavor. But to the end, every school made, house made, even we had, you know, on the dessert, on the chocolate cake, on the chocolate cake. It is a, a candied orange that you do. I mean, everything is done here. Everything yeah. is done in the house. Well, now we're going to watch uh, what we had for lunch. It was an extensive lunch. It was very good. Beautiful. Great job, Jeff. Thank you so much. Thank you. Great to have you.